Okay, it says, is there a difference between Jews and Israelites? That's actually a very good question. You know why? Because when you think about it, right, you'd be like, of course there is, right? That's what you're going to say. Okay, let me hear somebody explain this for us really quick. Then I got a follow-up question. Shalom, Cap. Most high Christ bless. Hey, most high Christ bless, bro. Um, Jews would be someone from the southern kingdom, which would be considered uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And Israelites would be all 12 tribes. That's 100% correct. But that's not it. That ain't it. The reason why I say that, it's a great question because in the scriptures, is that easy to explain? You'd need to go through a few things, right? Is there like yes. one preset that shows that? No, sir. I haven't seen it. All right, that's why I say it's a good question. So I'm going to go through some stuff, all right? Didn't write this portion down. So I'm going to be just hopping, all right? Try to go through some history so you can understand um, the true difference, okay? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully you understand the true difference. This is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 19, verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, which is over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth. Read on. To Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. All right. It says, uh, to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. Okay. I need, this is a two-part question. Who is Hezekiah and who is Isaiah? Uh, Jasher. Isaiah was the uh, prophet that prophesied about uh, Babylon coming, and he also lived during the uh, Assyrian captivity. And Hezekiah was the last king before Nebuchadnezzar came. Okay, you said Isaiah lived during when? The Assyrian captivity, but he prophesied about the Babylon captivity. He didn't live during uh, Babylon captivity? Yes, sir. He was in it. Okay, so he was in Assyrian and Babylonian captivity. Yes, sir. Okay, who's you say Hezekiah was? Hezekiah was the king before uh, Nebuchadnezzar came and overtook Jerusalem. He showed uh, my bad. He showed the, uh, some visitor from Babylon came and he showed them all the uh, Jews and stuff that they had in the castle. And uh, Isaiah prophesied that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was going to come destroy uh, Jerusalem, where the castle was at. Good. Very good. Jump up to verse, uh, when Isaiah gets into him. Actually, just start at verse 15. We're going to read what uh, Brother Jesher just went over. 15 on down. Come on. Second King, chapter 19, verse 15. Uh-huh. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Come on. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria had destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. For there were no gods but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Uh -huh. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, mm -hmm. that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Watch this. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. Mm -hmm. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, had despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem had shaken her head at thee. All right, stop there. Now I want you to go to chapter 20. All right, chapter 20. All right, so now we're picking up uh, with the um, example Jasher gave about the, the visit with the Babylonians, okay? So he invites, Hezekiah invites these uh, Babylonians into his, um, his home, shows them everything, okay? 
Is it smart to show your enemy your home, where your family stay, where your precious things are? No, it's not, okay? Now pick up at verse 11. Second King, chapter 20, verse 11. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Y'all didn't even catch that. Read on. At that time, Bordash, oh. at that time, Bordash Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah. For he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Come on. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Read. Then came Hezekiah the prophet unto the unto king hezekiah excuse me then came isaiah the prophet unto king hezekiah and said unto him what said these men and from whence came they unto thee and hezekiah said they are come from a far country even from babylon uh-huh and he said what have they seen in thine house and hezekiah answered all the things that are in mine house have they seen there is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Stop. So in chapter 19, Hezekiah had a prayer. Isaiah confirmed that his prayer was answered. Later on in chapter 19, the Mosai God sent a death angel, wiped out the Assyrians, right? He answered his prayers. But now you see Hezekiah in the next chapter over does stupid stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Now. Before I get to where we're going, Brother Jasher said Isaiah prophesied during Assyrian and Babylonian captivities, right? So right here where we're reading, right here, where, what time period is this? Which one is it? Uh, Stefan. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, this is the end of the Assyrian captivity? Mm, during this is the yeah the Syrian captivity we'll go with that this is the Syri Assyrian captivity okay now we're gonna don't forget where we at we're gonna go to Second Kings seventeen and I want you to read verses yeah just read verse eighteen Second Kings chapter seventeen verse eighteen therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel. And remove them out of his sight. Stop. So when it says Israel in that verse, who is it talking about? Who has that? Um, Simon. When it says Israel in that verse, who is it talking about? Yeah, uh, so on leadership, uh, northern kingdom. It's not talking about the southern kingdom uh, at all? Remnants of them. Okay. All right, the northern kingdom. Good answer. That's correct. All right. Read verse 18. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 18. Come on. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. Who, how did he remove them out of his sight? How did he do that? Think about it. Just say it for me. Yes, the Assyrians. Oh, you're right. Captivity by the hand of the Assyrians. 100% correct. I'm just making sure you understand this. So you understand what's coming out later. Come on. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. It says there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Right? Now in the kingdom of Judah, um, who knows that history about the split? Who knows that history? Uh, tell us a history, Simon. Uh, yes, sir. So that's, um, that's going into uh, doing the... The reign of King Solomon, um, he was uh, he he reigned, and then um, when he started dealing with those other women from the uh, different nations, the most high, uh, uh, the punishment was that uh, he was gonna split up the kingdom, and um, yeah, he ended up splitting it up between uh, Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Jeroboam had northern; he was the king of the northern kingdom, and Rehoboam was the king of the southern kingdom. 
Very good. All right, to unite the kingdom, to keep it united. All right, they were asking that uh, he lessen the yoke uh, that his father Solomon had on them. All right, he decided to forego the counsel of uh, the, the wise men early in the chapter and do his own thing. He says, not only am I going to make it bad for y'all, going to make it even worse, okay? Now we're picking up after that. All right, read verse 15. The book of 2 Kings, or 1 Kings, excuse me, chapter 12, verse 15. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the, the Shilonite unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Read. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, what portion have we in David? All right. So when they heard that Rehoboam, the king of who? Southern who? Southern the southern kingdom said, all right, nah, I ain't going to make any things better. All right. Read that again. What portion have we in David? So they're saying, okay, what portion do we have here? All right. Since, you, since our lives are going to be rough, we're not going to be here. We have no place in Jerusalem. Okay. Read. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse mm -hmm. to your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. Uh -huh. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. What does that mean? Who can explain verse 17? What does that mean? Uh, Brother Aaron. Uh, that means that he reigned over the Jews that were still there. Ah, right. uh, he said it wrong. I meant the Israelites. Uh, more specific, so I know you got it. The one, the ones that stayed, stayed, that didn't leave. He he reigned over them. Ah, uh, not being clear, not clear enough. Uh, let me hear James. The uh, Shalom leadership. Hey, Shalom. The uh, northern kingdom that's remnants that stayed behind, that's who we reigned over. Correct. Right. Right. That's 100% correct. All right. We ain't going to go over all of it. As you know, Benjamin and Levi came down too, but it wasn't just the three. Um, Second Chronicles 15 and uh, 8. That's another precept. Make sure you write this down as well. All right. So we can understand. Remember, the question is, what's the difference between Jews and Israelites? That's what we're doing. We're setting... The history. We're going over the history right now. Second Chronicles 15 and 8. Read that. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 8. Come on. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. Uh -huh. And out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord Read. that was before the, pro the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon. For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. Right. So you saw some of uh, northern kingdom after the split. They was like, nah. Y'all are worshiping idols and stuff. Now nah, we see that the Lord is in Jerusalem. Okay, so you still had righteous uh, brothers and sisters from northern kingdom after the split that came down to dwell in Jerusalem amongst the southern kingdom. Okay, all right. So let's go back to 2 Kings 20 and pick up with the prophet Isaiah. So what have we learned so far? We've learned that Isaiah prophesied during the Assyrian captivity. All right, that's what we're reading right now. All right, now during this time, the Assyrians already came and took the northern kingdom of Israel captive. All right, but you still have some northern kingdom dwelling where? In Jerusalem, right? All right, very good. All right, this is uh, 2 Kings 20 and 14. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 14. Uh -huh. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, 
They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. Uh -huh. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. Read. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, save the Lord. So Isaiah prophesied about the what? The Babylonians coming to take away uh, the southern kingdom. Okay. Second Kings 24. And uh, verse 10. Second Kings chapter 24, verse 10. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. Right. So the Babylonian military came and besieged the city. All right. Now jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Come on. And he carried away all Jerusalem. So in Jerusalem, who dwelt there? Got to make sure. Consisted of. And remnants of the northern kingdom. Very good. Okay. Read, read, uh, read it again. Verse 14. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives. And all the craftsmen and smiths, none remained, save the poor sort of the people of the land. Good. All right. So let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 26. That confirmed the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Uh -huh. That saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. Read on. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Who is Cyrus? Who is that? Uh, he was the king of the Persians and Medes. Right. Right. So we see Isaiah doing what he's prophesying. That's the thing about it. This, this, before he even came, Isaiah already prophesied about Cyrus. That's the heaviness of the, of the scriptures. He's prophesying about Cyrus to come, saying that there's going to come a time when we go into captivity again, but he's going to free us to go rebuild the, uh, the temple. Okay. Isaiah 45 and 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, mm -hmm. and I will lose the lines of kings. The, uh, loose the loins of kings. Come on. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two, the two leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. So God is showing us an example of what? He can use the other nations to do whatever he wants to do okay and the thing about it cyrus hearkened that's why cyrus was a great king just like um nebuchadnezzar also hearkened to the most high god his son was it belshazzar when you read in um daniel did not hearken to the most high and that's why he allowed the persians and the medes to do what to invade and take over okay so understand yes God can use heathens, okay? Just like, uh, was that Jethro, all right? Didn't he use uh, Jethro to talk some sense into Moses? Right. The Most High God can use he heathens. He created them, right? All right. So that's how we got to think as uh, Israelites. Don't forget, we are not as special as we think we are. He chose us, not the other way around, right? He d dictates on who he wants to use. Now, why are we going this route? Uh, go to the book of Ezra, chapter 1. Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah 
might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. Come on. So this is what? This is what's happening right here. Bring what we just went over. Bring it full circle for everybody. What is taking place right here? Hey, shalom, leadership. Shalom. All right, so basically we're going over um, how the Jews uh, were separated uh, in the days of Solomon. And then they were on the rail bone and um, I can't think of the Jeroboam. Story. Jeroboam. And then when Isaiah prophesied that uh, uh, Cyrus was going to take them into captivity, now we're going into when Ca Cyrus released them That's from it. the captivity. That's all I want to hear. I want to see if y'all can... Because if you can teach it, that means what? You learned it, okay? The best way to learn is to teach because you have to be sure about what you're talking about. So I want y'all, as you learn it, be able to say, can I explain that? If you can't, stop. Raise your hand. That's fine, all right? Very good, uh, Aaron. All right, read that verse again. Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, mm -hmm. that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth. See that? Didn't we just read that in Isaiah 45 and 1? It was prophesied years before he came to uh, power. Come on. And he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which is in Judah. Read. Who is there among you of all his people? So this is another thing that you got to realize in the scriptures too. He had enough common sense to know that the only reason he was ruling is because the Israelites was in sin. He, he understood that. Ju Judah 5 and 20, he got that. And he understood that he would not continue to rule if he didn't hearken to God. Meaning what? He knew he wasn't God's people. He followed that. But he was okay with that. That's the biggest thing. Okay? Read. Verse 3. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem. You see that? Said his God be with him. Okay? He knew that's not his God. But he knew that's the God of the Israelites. Okay? Come on. Which is in Judah. And build the house of the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. Second Chronicles 6 6. Come on. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, besides the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Right. So he said, Hey. They need money, they need items, they need food, possession, give it to them. Y'all have to understand what type of God we serve. We were in captivity, slavery by the hands of them. And God said, all right, this is what I want. And he did it. He had to do it. Okay? Read on. Verse 5. Let's see who went. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build a house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. Right, because who got taken into captivity? Southern kingdom did, right? All right. And now, O Lord, the king, that is that which I require and which I desire of thee. And this is the princely, liberally, Liberality. And this is the princely liberality proceeding from thyself. I desire, therefore, that thou make good the vow, the performance whereof with thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the king of heaven. Come on. Then Darius, the king, stood up and kissed him and wrote letters for him unto all the treasurers and lieutenants and captains and governors that they should safely convey, convey on their Weigh both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. Right. So he said they should be safe, meaning what? I'm going to send men to protect you and guide you and watch you as you travel back to Jerusalem to build the Lord's house. All right. Come on. Verse 48. He wrote letters also unto the lieutenants that were in Celestria 
and Phanis, and unto them in, in Libanus that they should bring cedar wood from Libanus unto Jerusalem, and that they should build the city with him. Read. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm up into Jewry concerning their freedom, that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, no treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors, and that all the country which they hold should be free without tribute. Right. So we should be free without tribute. All right. So from there, let's go to uh, Nehemiah. All right. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. This is Artaxerxes during his time, which came after um, Darius and Cyrus. All right. All right. Watch this. Nehemiah 2, verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass in a month, Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes, the king that what the king that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now, I had not been before time sad in his presence. Stop. So I wanted the time period. Now let's get to the point. Um, watch this. Go to Nehemiah 4 and 1. All right. Watch this. Uh, pay close attention to what it says. Nehemiah 4 verse 1. But it came to pass that when Samblet heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You can't just read that like that, brother. What are we teaching about? What's the topic? What's the difference between the Jews and the Israelites? So you got to read it right. Thank you. Read it again. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. But it came to pass that when Sambalit heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And mocked who? And mocked the Jews. Now, why did we go through all of that history? Somebody explain it. Now I need you to bring it full circle. Just to make sure you understand it. There's a reason why we went through all of that history. Yes, let me hear uh, Shemuel. Uh, Shalom. So we went through all that history to show that uh, there was a remnant of uh, northern kingdom left in Jerusalem with the southern kingdom. And when Sembalot mocked them, the Jews, he's saying that he mocked both the northern and the southern kingdom. That's, that's good. That's good. I, I'll rock with that. It's just most importantly, just so everybody understands, you have a better backing on who the Jews are. Okay. And when did they start referring to them as the Jews after the split? That's when it happened. That's that's really what I wanted you to see. We didn't we weren't called Jews until the split until after the split. OK, you ain't going to read Jew until you get to about second Kings. You ain't going to read it in the Bible. Nowhere before that. All right. So give me, what is that, Galatians 3.28. Yes. Microphone, please. So um, at this point, when they were called the Jews, when he mocked them as the Jews, there was still Northern Kingdom in mixed in with them? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, there was. Um, just another quick precept. Give me Esther. The book of Esther, chapter 5, verse 13. Come on. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. Right. So you'll, un you'll get more understanding of why they were referred to as Jews, because what took place? The split. The split. The split. The split. All right. So go to Galatians 3.28. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Come on. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. All right. So when it says the Jew, you would understand us talking about the southern kingdom who continued to keep God's laws with the remnant of the northern kingdom in that thing. When it says to the Greek, that's not just talking about all northern kingdom. Mainly, yes, 
But the Greek is also talking about the Hellenized Jews as well. You see what I said? The Hellenized Jews. Right. The Jews who were Hellenized during the Greek captivity and Northern Kingdom. Okay. Uh, Romans 1. And uh, was that 16? The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. Uh -huh. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. It came to the Jews first. Why? Who knows why? Two-part question. Uh, shalom leadership. Shalom. Uh, the, the the precept for that is Zechariah twelve and seven. Right. So if any, if anybody don't have that, write it down. Write it down in your Bibles right next to Romans one sixteen. Okay. Let's read the prophecy. Zechariah chapter twelve verse seven. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Do not magnify themselves against Judah. Right. So they don't magnify themselves because during the time of the split, who went off? The northern kingdom, right. So that's why he said when he comes back to gather the lost sheep, lost sheep of the house of Israel, he says he's going to go to the southern kingdom first. All right. So the northern kingdom don't magnify themselves against the uh, southern kingdom. All right. So now you understand that history. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.